And there I was, standing at the starting line, the senior boys 100 meter final. This was the biggest race of my entire life. All the training, all the exercise, all the focus, all led up to this moment. Win and my dreams finally come true. Lose and it would haunt me for the rest of my life. Just like the other races had in the past. I would be plagued with the question, why? Why didn't I win? What did I do wrong? Why didn't I execute? what I had learned. Why did I get beat again? Did I train too much or not enough? Why didn't I train smarter or prepare myself better? How do I even do that? Why do I keep failing? And most importantly, why was I still not fast enough to win when it matters the most? Usually, these were the questions I would be cursed with after I'd lose. But this time was different. I could tell it was. How did I know? I could feel it. I could see it. I could even hear it. You see, I had started using an exercise that not too many people know of as a part of my training program which I'll share with you in this video so make sure you watch the whole thing because this one exercise helped me to increase my physical ability instantly and I had been using it routinely so you see I actually knew it was different I had boosted my confidence I increased my focus decreased my reaction time I was sure that I had done everything that I could do to the best of my ability leading up to that moment and I knew it now it was time runners take your marks and just like that I was in the blocks like a wild animal waiting to get released from a cage I waited for the marshal to hear complete silence come over the crowd and see that we were all completely frozen still set That was the day I won the 100 meter gold medal at the provincial championship. That was the day I was crowned fastest kid in the province. That day, I achieved my goal of winning, which led me to accomplish my dream of getting a full ride scholarship to a D1 university. That was also the day I discovered a secret that worked. But let me back up for a second because it wasn't always like that. In fact, like I was telling you earlier, I was the guy who was sick and tired of losing races that I knew I should be winning. I was frustrated with not knowing how to get faster. I was the guy who would train hard, harder than anybody else I knew, but would show up to a race and lose. It was painful. I was what some would call a natural athlete, which was great for my ego, but then I'd show up to races and lose. Pathetic. Can you understand how frustrating that was? And it wasn't just in track and field races either. When I was in high school, I used to play hockey, basketball, football, even some pickup soccer. So when I talk about races I literally mean races on skates to the puck or on the court to the ball or on the field in any sport not just track and field and sprinting I actually didn't even start sprinting until my junior year of high school but that's besides the point my point is that I was sick and tired of losing frustrated with not competing at my fullest potential getting beat by guys half as athletic as me I was spending all my time putting in all the work, but no matter how much work I'd put in, it seemed like I was always coming up short until one day I discovered something that changed everything. And when I tell you everything, I mean everything. I had discovered an exercise that it seemed like none of my competition was utilizing. Combined with the speed training I was already doing and boom, I had the recipe to getting faster. And I know what you're probably thinking. How did I know that it wasn't a fluke? Am I right? Well, to be completely honest, there was a time when I thought the same thing. So I kept it to myself and practiced without letting anyone know exactly what I was doing. I used the combination of the exercise that I had discovered that would allow me to increase my physical ability along with my speed training program at university. And it worked. I won the conference championship as a freshman. I was awarded freshman of the year for my entire conference for winning three gold medals, one in the 100 meters, one in the 200 meters, and one in the four by 100 meter relay. Now I had used it to win the provincial championships, to make the national team, rep my country, go to university on a full ride scholarship, win the conference championship as a freshman, win freshman of the year, qualify for NCs. When I tell you I used the secret to win, I mean I used it. 
I could go on for days about how much I used this secret to succeed. But that's sort of a long story, so we'll have to save that for later. Because right now, this isn't about me. This is about you. Specifically, how I can help you to become faster. Now, before we get too deep into this, I want to start by taking on one of the biggest myths out there about getting fast. That has people believing that you can't teach speed. In fact, the other day, I was with my family having a discussion. The topic of speed came up because one of my uncles asked me if I could make a team of athletes that were dominant with one specific skill, what would that skill be? I said, hands down, it would be speed. He agreed, as did everyone else. But then he added more by saying, because you can't teach speed, which I then had to totally disagree with. So I said, actually, I disagree with you. To which he said, you can improve speed, but you can't teach it. In my head, I said, what on earth are you talking about? But my mouth said, huh? Now, this led us down into a conversation which I won't get into, but I literally had to prove that I could teach someone how to get faster. But what was weird about that was that I almost had to fight to prove my point. That's because there seems to be this weird old school train of thought that speed is just something you either have or you don't. I just want you to know that this is completely not true. But what's funny is that this isn't the first time that I've heard this. Regardless, it isn't true. For anyone disagreeing right now, I want you to really think about it. Why would speed be the one thing you can't teach? That doesn't even make sense. You can teach anything to practically anyone if they are willing and able to learn. Believe me, I've done it. Only difference is I had to do it the hard way. Whereas you, well, what I've put together for you is literally like giving you the keys to becoming faster. All you have to do is start the engine, meaning listen and apply what you learn. Think you can do that? I want you to imagine how it's going to feel a month from now or a year from now after you've received my training and have the speed you've always wanted. What's that going to do for you? What does that look like for you? Are you going to use it to get into a college or university like I did? Or maybe just become one of the fastest members on your team? Are you going to use it to teach others? Do we have any coaches or parents that are listening to this right now? Can you imagine giving your kids a gift that could literally help them to achieve their dreams. I want you to think of that. Exactly what does being fast look like for you? This is important because not everybody is the same. And it's important for you to recognize your why. Why is your why so important? Because this gives you the ability to not quit when it gets hard. This gives you the ability to recognize what is standing between you and your goal. Ultimately, your why helps you to confront your fears. And your fear is one of the biggest barriers you face, not only in getting faster, but in life. But because we're talking about speed, let's stick with that. If you're anything like I was, you've come to a point where you feel like your speed has reached a barrier, like something is stopping you from becoming faster. Well, I'm here to help you break through that barrier. But first, before we go too deep into what I'm about to share with you, let me put this disclaimer out there. My results are not typical. So by no means am I guaranteeing that after this training or you getting into my program, are you guaranteed a scholarship or to win a race or to make a team? That's going to be entirely up to you. But if you choose to come on this journey with me, what I can guarantee is to help you break through some of these barriers that might be holding you back. Like I said earlier, I went to school on a track scholarship, but I actually studied psychology. This was a blessing because like some of you might already know, I found that there is a huge connection between the body and the mind. Scientifically, both negative and positive. Negative because if you don't believe your body can do something, you won't be able to. Positive because of the reverse. If you believe your body has the capability to do something, you will be able to. Let that sink in. It's like that quote from Confucius goes, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right 100% of the time. An example of how this applies to athletes and their limiting beliefs are when someone wants to increase their vertical. Often, people look for methods of how to jump higher when it's not 
actually jumping higher that is limiting people. It's coming down safely. You see the difference? We are all pre-wired not to harm our bodies and therefore have an internal fear that limits us from jumping higher in fear of landing and hurting ourselves. Often with these vertical increase programs, the training and exercises that they teach us is to land gently from heights that we are typically not used to. This not only trains the concentric movement of landing to your muscles, but also reprograms your mind. That by landing from such heights, that your body will be able to safely handle it. It's our minds that are giving us our limiting beliefs. Just like when my uncle was saying, you can't teach speed. Some people actually believe that, which actually limits their capabilities. Now, before we get into that, tell me something. Why is speed such a secret? Does anybody know? Well, let's talk about value for starters. Esteem value. Being fast allows you to make teams that you want to make, win races that you want to win, win the championships of whatever sport you're in. Being fast gives you an advantage over your competition. Let's be honest. Overall, being fast makes you feel good about yourself in so many different ways. Now, let's talk about monetary value. Being fast also opens many doors that otherwise would not be opened. Let me talk about what speed has been worth to me, just so I can give you an understanding of my own personal experience. For starters, like I was telling you before, I won a big race in Ontario called OFSA. For those people in the States, that would be the equivalent of winning the state championship. What that did for me was get me offers from universities saying that they would pay for my education as long as I ran for their team. Now, I won't get into any of the things that could have happened. Let's just talk about what I actually got. The real facts of the cost of tuition, books, and a meal plan for me to attend as an international student to the university that I went to was around ten to twelve thousand dollars per semester. That's twenty to twenty-four thousand dollars per year, which is eighty to ninety-six thousand dollars over the course of four years. So on the very low end, just counting education, my speed was worth eighty thousand dollars. Now, I'm no genius. But if I had an $80,000 skill, I wouldn't be in such a hurry to go telling other people about how I got it. So from a monetary value standpoint, of course speed is such a secret. Can you see why this is? Regardless, let me be the one to help you by sharing some of the secrets about speed. Let me tell you about when I started to share this secret with others and how it helped them. When I was done university, I started working as a personal trainer. I would start working with a new client by giving them a full body assessment, meaning I would see exactly what they were capable of. Now, for most people that came to me, they had never pushed themselves to their max effort before. So while I was learning something about them, they were also learning something about themselves, exactly what their maximum physical ability looked like. I had an instant bond with a few of my clients and I decided to share my secret with them just to see if they too would experience results. The results were nothing short of amazing. Every single person that I showed this exercise to instantly increased their physical ability. If that wasn't enough, I wanted to teach them to combine a few speed movements to see if I could get them faster just for fun. Would you believe I had middle-aged women getting faster than they had ever been before in their life. Men who played in recreational beer leagues claiming they were moving like they did when they were teenagers. I had teenagers developing so much confidence that their parents would come in and personally thank me. Needless to say, my personal training business exploded. I was so busy. I started to have to choose the clients I wanted to work with. This was around the same time I started to work specifically with athletes. Word started getting around that I was helping people get faster. I was asked to do a speed camp for one of my client's son's soccer teams, so I did. The next thing I knew, his 13-year-old son had been recruited to a private school team in Europe and he couldn't thank me enough for all that I had taught him. I started coaching 
a professional hockey player in his offseason named Matt. I helped him increase his speed. He claimed to have had the best season of his career. In fact, he was so pleased with how he felt that the following offseason, he returned with two of his teammates. It was incredible. I had found my niche, my passion, and my athletes were experiencing tremendous results. I was teaching something that felt so natural. I felt like I had all the answers until one of my clients hit me with this question. What would you do to get faster overnight? Meaning, what exercises would you work on? What would you eat? Would you stretch or just rest? Would you get some sleep at night or stay up all night studying videos? What would you do? Well, this is the exact question that a 17 year old elite level swimmer named Colin was faced with when we were first introduced. I met Colin through his dad, Eric, who was a client of mine. I was helping Eric drop some weight and reduce some lower back pain he was facing by introducing him to some core and posterior chain activation exercises, along with some active release and PNF stretching. We had been getting some results rather quickly. We had only been working together for about a month or so when he asked me if I could help his son, Colin. I knew a little bit about Colin just from having conversation with Eric during our sessions. I knew he already had what most would consider to be a crazy schedule. His daily routine started at 4 a.m. every morning except Sundays. He would get dressed, get a ride to practice, or some days Eric would take him, as well as pick up a couple of his teammates, in the pool by 5 a.m., practice for two and a half hours, get showered, dressed, eat breakfast, get to school by 8.30, classes until 3, except Saturdays and Sundays, of course, back in the pool by 3.30, practice for another hour, hour and a half until 5 p.m. Grab a quick meal for dinner, dry land training from 6 till 7 p.m. every day except for Saturdays and Sundays. Home by 7.30, homework, bed, sleep. That was Colin's life. Needless to say, when Eric asked me to help Colin, my initial thought was when would he have time in his schedule to come and see me? To my surprise, that wasn't what Eric had in mind at all. This was a Wednesday night and Colin had the biggest race of his career coming up on Saturday. Eric knew from our conversation that I had been involved in some big races during my career and was wondering if I could come to his house and talk to Colin about how I would prepare myself. The problem was I had a full schedule Thursday and the only time I could make it happen would be Friday evening, the day before his race. Perfect, Eric said. That'd be perfect. What time, he asked. I could do 6 p.m. That would work perfect. He doesn't have any dry land training Friday night because his competition. I'll text you my address. See you then. Now, I don't know if you'd feel this way, but suddenly I started feeling a lot of pressure. I started feeling like it was my race that was coming up and I needed to start preparing. The real question for me became, what would I teach Colin to get him faster literally overnight? I really didn't want to disappoint Eric. And even more importantly, I didn't want to disappoint Colin. I felt like he was really counting on me to teach him something extremely valuable that would help him perform as the highest version of himself. I remember the day before meeting him going over in my mind exactly what I would teach him. I remember thinking, maybe I'll teach him about his diet and what food would be best for him to eat the night before a competition. But then by the time I got there, it would already be too late. And I'm sure his dinner would have already been prepared. I thought about teaching him an exercise that we used to use in sprinting that would help us train our reaction time. But this was the day before his competition. Introducing a new exercise could have negative impacts on his ability to perform. And I didn't want him thinking about some new exercise when he should be just focused on his race. I thought maybe I should just go to his house and tell him he should get some rest so that he feels ready to compete. But then again, I was sure that he already knew that. I started to think that maybe this was a bad idea and that I'd be better off not going. That way, I couldn't be blamed if his race didn't go as planned. It wasn't until I really stopped to think and asked myself this question that the answer even came to me. What would I do the night before a competition to perform to the best of my ability? When I asked myself that question, the answer became obvious. I knew exactly what to share with Colin. I even knew the exercise that I would teach him. By now, 
I know you're probably wondering, what exactly is this secret exercise you've been talking about and teaching all of your clients? Am I right? And don't worry, I'm just about to reveal to you exactly what it is that I've been talking about. But before I do, let me ask you something. Before now, did you know that there is an exercise that can increase your physical ability instantly? On top of that, this exercise also has the ability to increase your strength, boost your confidence, improve your focus, decrease reaction times, rewire your brain as well as several other benefits. What if I told you that this is an exercise that can improve your skills in any sport? In fact, some of the world's best athletes use this exercise frequently as a major part of their training. I'm talking about people like Tiger Woods, Jack Nicklaus, Steph Curry, Michael Phelps, Conor McGregor, and Usain Bolt, and so many more. Now, although this exercise is used regularly by most of the world's greatest athletes, would it surprise you if I told you that the majority of amateur athletes don't do it at all? It's true. In fact, even if an athlete hears about the incredible potential behind this exercise, learns about scientific data backed by evidence that confirms the results of how powerful this exercise truly is, most people still won't do it. Can you believe that? It's true. The reason for this is because we as athletes have fallen victim to something called conditioning. What this means is that our behavior has become predictable in a specific environment. In plain English, we train for our sport the same way as we always have, even if there's a better way. Can you believe that? That's like sending smoke signals to communicate or call 911 instead of using a cell phone or taking the horse and buggy to get your loved one to the hospital rather than using a car or an ambulance. My point is that the times have changed. So why haven't we? Why haven't we as athletes changed the way we train or the exercises we do to increase our skills. Now, some might say simply because they work. It has worked, still works, which in many cases is true. I mean, that's why everybody is doing the same exercises, right? Because they work. But now, if everybody is doing the same exercises, how are you going to be different? How are you supposed to be better than your competitor? How are you going to gain an advantage? Here's how, by combining exercises that everyone is doing with an exercise that everyone is not doing. So what is this exercise that everyone is not doing, that only the pros seem to be utilizing? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's called mental imagery and visualization. Visualization is any technique used for creating mental images. Mental imagery is an experience or a creation of an event that occurs in your mind. The creation of an event that occurs in your mind is what's known as mental imagery and visualization. When done correctly, Correctly, this can be one of the most powerful exercises known to mankind. Do you know why this is? It's the fact that our brains cannot tell the difference between an actual event and a vivid visualization of that event. The reason for this is because when we experience something and we visualize the same thing, we activate similar brain circuits. Because of this, visualizing desirable outcomes helps with so many things including boosting confidence, motivating ourselves, improves our focus, practice movement sequences, increases strength, decreases reaction time, rewire our brains and makes epigenetic changes to our bodies. These things alone with our training reinforce and complement each other to improve performance and help us reach our goal. Check out how extraordinary this exercise is. A study looking at brain patterns in weightlifters found that the patterns activated when weightlifters lifted hundreds of pounds were similarly activated when they only imagined lifting. In some cases, research has revealed that mental practices are almost as effective as true physical practice and that doing both is more effective than either one alone. An example of this was when an exercise psychologist by the name of Gang Yu compared people who went to the gym with people who carried out virtual workouts in their heads. He found a 30% muscle strength increase in the group that went to the gym and a 13.5% muscle strength increase by the group that performed only mental exercises. Can you believe that? That means that the group that didn't 
lift a single weight experienced almost half the same strength increase as the group that lifted for three months. Isn't that mind-blowing? What blows my mind even more than that is that some of the world's greatest athletes have gone on record saying that using visualization techniques have been a major part of their success. However, some of us are still not using it as part of our training. Michael Phelps talks about visualization in his book. Tiger Woods has employed this technique since his pre-teens. World champion golfer Jack Nicklaus says that he has never hit a shot, not even in practice, without having a very sharp in-focus picture of it in his head. World champion Conor McGregor uses visualization to prepare for his fights. In UFC 194, Conor knocked out a 10-year undefeated champion in 13 seconds. How did he do it? He had been visualizing the sequence for months before the fight and had even told the world exactly what was going to happen and how he was going to do it. I plan to set him up, trap him, lead him into dead space, lead him where he feels he is safe, but all of a sudden, it's a trap and he is in big danger. During his warm up, he was practicing the exact sequence he used to knock out his opponent and win the fight. When the fight started, his mind was already primed and ready to display what he had mentally created and rehearsed for months prior to the event. Even his coach acclaims much of his success to how serious he takes his mental imagery and visualization exercises. He knew exactly what was going to happen long before it happened because he had done it a thousand times in his head. He had warmed up in backstage. He had heard the crowd. He had smelt the arena. He had seen the audience. He, he would really immerse himself in, wow. the, in, the, in the fight night. So by the time fight night came along, where a lot of people do maybe been training in kind of a quiet gym for eight or 12 weeks, and then they walk out to 15,000 people and they get, they get shocked. He used to walk in going, yeah, this is my thousandth time doing this. Are you starting to understand the absolute power behind this information? Well, check this out. In 1996, the University of Chicago conducted one of the pioneering tests of mental imagery. Researcher Dr. Blas Lotto segregated his sample participants into three groups and tested them on how many free throws they could convert. After the initial measurement, the first group physically practiced for an hour each day. The second group practiced visual imagery. The third group did neither. After 30 days, Dr. Blas Lotto noted the improvement scores as following. 24% for the first group, 24% for the second group and no improvement for the third. Visualization is an often taught mental rehearsal technique in sports. It is an extremely valuable, powerful tool and numerous studies have been done to test this. You may have heard of this basketball study or a different one with similar results. Either way, this secret is so powerful that you can use it in any sport to almost instantly increase your physical ability. This technique can be used to improve your abilities without breaking a sweat. I mean, look at this basketball study, for example. The second group literally never shot a basketball once, and their improvement results were the exact same as the group who had practiced for an hour each day. Imagine what you could do if you used mental imagery and visualization on top of proper speed training. I want you to think about that for a second. If you knew it could make you faster, could you practice mental exercises every day? Remember, this does not require you to break a sweat. Sometimes you might not even have to move. Now, one of the most powerful aspects about this technique is that you only need a little bit of practice to make this work. Unfortunately, most people don't find this out until the end of their career or turn pro or it's just too late. Some of the best stars in professional sports use visualization before competition, which has proven to give them a huge advantage. Look at Steph Curry, for example. Curry's high school coach was Sean Brown, who introduced him to the technique of visualization before the game. Curry would routinely sit on a bench 
and make mental imagery of what the game was going to look like. Curry continued to practice this and further enhanced his visualization skills during his career at Davidson College. He was convinced about the significance as he had heard about it again in the pros. Shortly after being drafted by the Warriors, assistant coach Keith Smart told Curry to take a moment before every game and watch it pan out in his mind. Now, clearly my boys from the Toronto Raps had a different agenda for Curry's mental imagery techniques last year, but let's not take anything away from Curry as one of the best basketball players of all time. Can we all agree? Check out what he has to say about mental rehearsal and visualization here. I like to be one step ahead when it comes to seeing the game and to understanding what's going on and being observant. And if I can, you know, train my, my mind to, to be there and to be sharp, you know, and to really push me to that next level, then I think that's, that's as important as, you know, being, being physically ready as well. That means when everything's in sync and when I'm confident, the sky's the limit for what I'm able to accomplish. So as you can see, this is no joke. The power within this exercise can truly be life changing. There's no question about that. But I suppose if you're watching this video, the real question is, how can you use this to become faster? Well, check this out. I'm just about to teach you exactly that. But before I do, it's important for you to learn the fundamentals of how visualization actually works. And because you've stuck with me this long, as promised, I'm going to to give you this secret exercise that can instantly increase your physical ability. Then, once you've learned this exercise and we made it work for you, we will start to apply it to getting you faster. Sound like a deal? Good. I have created a video demonstrating how this exercise works. All you have to do is follow instructions. And by now, you should have already received it in your email inbox. It's titled, Welcome to Speed Movement, The Secret Exercise. Now, the first thing you're going to want to make sure you do is whitelist these emails from Speed Movement. That way, when we send you some more golden information, it doesn't get sent to your junk box. Second, you're going to want to participate in this exercise, meaning actually get up and do it. So if for some reason you can't commit to that because you've got distractions going on or maybe you have to use the bathroom right now or anything, don't bother doing it right now. Do it when you can take the time and actually focus. So if you're ready, go ahead and check that email right now and I'll see you in the next video. I know you're gonna dig this.